Hey guys, it's Daniel again with Ball C351's Productions. Today I want to talk to you about heaters and what I've found out the hard way with the heaters that I already had. Now something you see in my video that you never ever see in my videos is a motorcycle. Now this is my father's 2007 Honda Shadow Spirit 1100. Now I picked this motorcycle up from his house about three weeks ago in my car hauler. This motorcycle set up from about 2011 to 2020, about three weeks ago. And it had been sitting in his garage for that long without being ridden or washed or cleaned. And what I've done, I've gone through, cleaned it completely. I have you know, polished the chrome up. I've took the carburetor off, cleaned it out real good, put it back in, and I finally got it running and it runs like a top. Now initially when I was doing the work, I was using these two Dynaglow kerosene heaters. Each heater is good for about 24,000 BTU. Together I was running them and it was fine until the temperature here in Texas dropped and it dropped drastically. So during the day it was 65, 70 degrees and then all of a sudden at night it got down into the 20s. And when it got to the 20s, these heaters just would not keep up, especially since my shop is not insulated. Now, some of you guys will understand this. Uh, we work out in the shop, we work out in the garage, you know, it gets cold and we just make do with what we have until we just can't work anymore. Well, I was working out here in the shop on this motorcycle and it was really, really cold outside. My heaters were going full blast. Then the wife came out and the wife wanted to know why is it so cold in here? And I told her, you know, these heaters will not keep up with the temperatures that we currently have outside. So my wife gave me the okay to go ahead and buy a new heater. So I looked online and found this master MH-140T-KFA 140,000 BTU forced air heater up at my local tractor supply. Now assembly of this unit was pretty easy. Now up front and top, you have a guard that keeps you from getting burned. It just is held on by two screws. You have a simple axle that's threaded on each end. You just slide the axle in, you put the acorn nuts on after you put the wheels on, tighten those down, and the back handlebar and the back lower support just snap in. And once you get those on there and fill it full of fuel, you're ready to rock and roll. A couple of nice features this heater has is an adjustable thermostat. You can adjust it how warm or how cool you want it in your workspace. It also has a digital readout that tells you approximately what the temperature is in your workspace. Also, what's really nice and a lot of these heaters don't do is this one cuts off when it reaches the temperature that you want it to be in your workspace and then it kicks it back on when the temperature drops. Where the fuel is concerned, it has just your basic fuel level that has a float inside the tank that tells you approximately how much fuel is in the unit. Now, personally, I have added just a bit over 10 gallons of fuel in this particular unit, and the needle does raise and lower accordingly. Here is your fuel cap. I would highly suggest that you get a funnel to add fuel to your unit. 
Another really nice feature is that the plug-in has a plug on the back side of it. So when you hook it up to an extension cord, you can plug something into the back of it and you'll still have your outlet to use. Now on the back of the unit, it has a fuel pressure gauge and fuel pressure adjustment. Now you'll want to adjust this according to the temperature of your workspace along with the type of fuel that you use. Now it is factory set and factory settings with kerosene worked fine for me, but when I went and added diesel fuel, I had to turn the fuel pressure down. You want to adjust this according to the factory instructions and also the factory video available on YouTube that tells you how to properly adjust it. Now, like I said, I've used two different fuels in this particular heater. I started out with kerosene, and kerosene did work fine, except for it is very costly. Now, tractor supply, it's about $30 for five gallons, and I ran through five gallons really quickly in this heater. And I went and bought another five gallons, and it burned it up pretty quick, and of course, it's getting quite expensive. So I read through instructions and found, yes, I can use diesel. So I went and purchased diesel and tried it out in the unit. Now, originally, I was hesitant, like everybody else is, about diesel fuel. You know, you have the stigma, the black smoke, the smell. You don't get any of that with this heater, especially with the new types of diesel fuel we have out now that is low sulfur. I get no black smoke whatsoever, and the only smell that I've been able to detect is right after I fill the heater up with diesel and maybe just a little bit of the aroma left over before I, you know, capped off the fuel tank. Otherwise, diesel fuel is what I'm going to be running from now on in my heater, and it's pretty cheap right now here in Texas. It's a little bit over $2 a gallon. Now, operation of the heater is pretty simple and straightforward once you have it filled with fuel. You plug it into the wall socket, then you just switch it on. Now there is a little bit of noise associated with the forced air heater. Now it is not as loud now as it was to begin with when I was running kerosene fuel. When I switched over to diesel, I had to turn the fuel pressure down to compensate for the diesel so the flame would not shoot out of the combustion chamber outside of where you see here in the front of the, of the unit where it's starting to glow red. Now with the heater running, you can see right now it is 55 degrees in my shop. And as it heats up in here, that will go up. It'll start moving upwards, 55, 56, 57, until it gets up to about 70 degrees where the thermostat is set, and then it will cut off. Then whenever the temperatures drops again, then the heater will kick back on and resume heating the shop until it gets back up to the thermostat setting, which is 70 degrees. All in all, I've been quite pleased with my new master heater here in my shop. It has become quite useful the last few nights this week, especially since it's gotten down in the 40s while I've been out here working on this motorcycle. Now, price point for this master heater, it's going to put you back about $300. I got mine on sale at Tractor Supply. It's been on for $250. Now, if you look down in the description of my video, I have links to where you can purchase this heater and other miscellaneous items that I've shown in my videos. This is Daniel with Boss C351's Productions. I appreciate you watching my videos. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you find anything that I have in my videos that is helpful to you. Again, thank you for watching my video.